What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so moving right along, we're looking at a really, really welcomed update, a new feature that we have as of Studio One version 4.1.1, the new maintenance update that just launched recently as of the time I'm doing this video. Now, it's worth mentioning that the initial improvement, or rather the foundation for this feature improvement, came in version 4.1, but as of this maintenance update, they've streamlined it with a very, very useful feature. All right, so let's have a quick listen. What are we looking at here? We're looking at a kick drum that has been recorded at various different tempos. So let's just have a listen, and we'll put it up against the click at 120. Okay, so as you can see, it doesn't match or anything at all. It's totally off the grid and that's because it doesn't have a static BPM. All right, so let's go ahead and tempo map this. Now the first thing, and this is an important step, is you wanna select your track and make sure that you open up the inspector and make sure that you're set to don't follow. Now you can see that we don't have any file tempo information in this file at all. Okay, so the next step, we're gonna detect transients. So I've just gone ahead, this is the stock transient detection that Studio One has done. And if you wanna do that, you can just click this audio band menu, select an event, and click analyze. All right. So now that this is done, this is so easy. Simply hold down command if you're on a Mac or control if you're on a PC. And with the snapping on, this is rather important, go ahead and just click, you wanna click the area right where the bar boundary is. And I wanna align the bars first before I do the beats. Now it doesn't matter, your cursor doesn't have to be here. Also, you do not have to add a tempo mode ahead of time. All you have to do is simply just hover your mouse over here, click and drag. That is automatically added a tempo node. And the other thing that's happened is it's automatically snapped to this transient detection point. All right, so the idea here is that I just wanna kind of do this for the whole entire performance, I just want to hover my mouse cursor and I'm just dragging to these downbeats. Now this one, you'll notice that it snaps to the bend markers. In addition, it also snaps to event boundaries. So let's go ahead and have a listen now. So I can hear that the downbeats all make sense, but we have the subdivisions. Each one of these beats, these are off, and you can see even just visually. This is just as simple. I'm just gonna hover my cursor, and I have to hover in the timeline, in the tempo track, until I see this little icon, and then this is just gonna snap to these, and it's just a matter of me clicking and dragging, and it's going to auto snap. We'll go ahead and do these, this one, and last but not least, we will do this one. So now let's have a listen. Okay, so you'll notice that everything works perfectly now. So we now have the tempo map. If I wanted to change the resolution here, I can use my minimum and maximum values if I wanted to change the way that this is displayed. But this is it, so now this file is tempo map. Now the cool thing is now that we have the proper tempo map that goes with this file, at this point, if I was to select this event and go ahead and bounce it, this has created a new file. And now if I click this and set it to time stretch, because this file has the tempo map that we created by manually tempo mapping, now if I did something like, for example, blow out all of this tempo information, I could set it to a static 120 or for example, 140. And because it's set the time stretch, that's gonna follow. Let's have a listen now. So that's it, very, very simple. And the main thing you have to remember is that you need to hover your mouse in the actual tempo track. We open it up, you need to hover your mouse here and hold command if you're on a Mac or control if you're on a PC. And you wanna drag the actual tempo point to the transient. And when you detect the bend markers ahead of time, if you have snapping on, this will automatically snap. Now this is the main change between 4.1 and 4.1.1 is they added snapping to bend markers. Now let's go ahead and have a look at another song over here. So this is the same principle, but instead of looking at one static file, like a stereo file or a mono file, we're looking at a set of multi-track drums. So let's go ahead, we'll have a quick listen to these, and I've got my click on at 120. Maybe we'll zoom in a little bit. Now this is completely free time performance. 
So it's still sounding pretty good over here. But you can see it starts to go off. Okay, so now at that point, we are totally off the click. So it's gonna be the same thing over here. First things first, let's open up our tempo track. Now I wanna go ahead and detect the transients and keep in mind, we can do that either by clicking this menu option over here and choosing analyze, or another way that we can do it is if we go into audio and we can detect transients. Now I've also gone ahead and set this to a key command and also because I've used it recently, it's available in my recent items. So let's go ahead and use that. So now the idea here is that if you're working with a multi-track performance and you've got different tracks that hold different elements of the groove, so for example, a kick and a snare, maybe there's a bass guitar as well, all of these elements can be useful in order to define either beats or bar boundaries. So you want to choose the tracks that have information that might be useful to help you with the tempo mapping. Now, again, same thing with this case. We want to make sure that all of our tracks over here, you can see that I've set them all to don't follow. So the minute these are set to don't follow, now the concept is the exact same. This time though, I'm going to use a couple shortcuts. So first of all, let's go ahead and let's zoom these two tracks into view so we can see what we're working with. I want to use my move forward one bar, which is shift and the plus key on the numeric keypad. This will allow me to move one bar at a time. And the benefit here, of course, is that I can stay pretty zoomed in like this, and I'll be able to see these transient points. So I've already gone ahead and I've edited this performance so that the first downbeat, I snipped everything before that and I shuffled everything back to start at bar one. And now all we need to do is let's just navigate using my shortcut and then the same thing again, holding down command, I can snap this. Now, if you need to move it, if for example, I wanted to move it to here, the snapping in Studio One is elastic. So as soon as you pass that, then we're moving freely from the grid. And alternatively, you could turn off snapping just for a moment. But I will say that most of the time they work pretty good. So now I'm gonna hold down Shift and my plus arrow again, and this is gonna be the same thing. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep talking and I'm just gonna keep mapping these out and you can see how fast you can map out a performance just by using these shortcuts, for example. And we're just mapping the bar boundaries right now. So this is something that we can go back in after the fact and we can have a look at the different beats and the different subdivisions if we need to. But this is pretty easy. Now I'm zoomed in quite close, so maybe I could back out a little bit. And keep in mind, we have that snapping. So even if you're not zoomed in really, really tight, Studio One is doing a really good job with snapping to the beginning of those bar boundaries simply because I have my snapping enabled. And once again, this is just a keyboard shortcut I'm using to move forward one bar at a time. And I believe the stock setting on that is shift and the plus arrow on a numeric keypad. And if it's not, then you can just map it out to whatever you'd like. But this is what really makes this workflow useful to me. And like I said, if you don't have a perfect boundary and you wanna move it, we have that elastic snapping that Studio One is doing that allows us to move a little bit. Okay, so let's do this one and let's have a listen to see how it's done. And keep in mind, this is a multi-track performance. Okay, that's pretty good. And you can see my click values here. We have like four decimal points here, so this is really accurate. Now, if you wanted to get even more detailed, we have these other points that have been mapped out as well. So you can see that I detected the transients on the snare as well as the kick. Now the kick is giving me my solid downbeat, but if I want it to be like super OCD, then something that we could consider doing is, same thing again, hovering my cursor in the tempo track at the bar boundary, right over top of it, holding down my command, and now you'll notice that I can click the beat one, or rather beat two and beat four, and I could map these out if I wanted to as well, right? Now we don't have a clear definition of our beat three, for example, but these ones over here, what I usually do is I try to do just the bars and then see if I need to do more, then I'll go in and get a little bit more forensic. But now you see we're getting even more detailed here. I'll we'll have a listen to this.
But one thing to be aware of here is that when you're working with one bar sections is that depending on the groove of the track and the swing or the shuffle feel, that those notes might not be hitting perfectly on a grid point in terms of your subdivisions. And as long as you get the downbeats, if you have solid downbeats, then everything in between might be following its own groove. So it might not have to hit directly on the click because that might be the groove of the track. So my advice here would be to start off with on the actual downbeats of the bars. And like I said, so easy to do now, especially with snapping set up and using this shortcut to move in just a one bar increment, we can get a track tempo mapped really, really, really quickly. Now, one thing I wanna point out, and I'll just continue working in the background as I'm talking here, is that Melodyne also allows us to do this. We have some built-in integration with Studio One and Melodyne, and this simplifies this process as well by automatically doing some smart tempo detection, which can then be further edited in Studio One if you need to. But I think it's really important that a DAW can do this natively, and I think this is one area that Studio One had some room for improvement, and in my opinion, they have just absolutely knocked it out of the park with this workflow of detecting the transients across one track or multiple tracks, and then quite simply being able to snap them just as I'm doing here. And you can see I've been yakking this whole time and kind of doing this on autopilot. Like I said, anytime you find this situation here where maybe it didn't go exactly as planned, we can either disable snapping or simply by holding, it'll snap, and then you just push a little bit further, and then it's going to move freely. So now we have like perfect tempo detection, and we can listen to some of that editing that I've done since I was talking. So, I mean, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. For me, I actually prefer to manually tempo map because it puts me 100% in control. But I'm also looking forward to trying Melodyne out and seeing how this works in combination with Melodyne's tempo detection. Now, one thing to add over here is that in addition to this actually working with audio tracks, the way that we've seen it work over here, this also works really, really well with MIDI. In fact, it works amazing with MIDI because if you have snapping on, you can snap to the actual note data on your MIDI tracks as well. But in an effort to keep this video short, I wanted to split this into two different videos. So this video was just about teaching you guys how to use it and showing you how it can be used across a single track or a multi-track. And in next week's video, we're gonna take a look at using it on MIDI information or instrument parts in Studio One. And in addition, we will also take a look at one other key command or shortcut combination that I didn't show you this week, which allows you to deal with pickups on audio events. That is information that is existing before your first downbeat at bar one. There's a really, really simple and streamlined way that we can work with that as well. And like I said, the best part about this is that after you've gone ahead and done your tempo detection, for example, like this, let's peel these all back to here. If I wanted to go ahead now and bounce these, these files now have this embedded tempo map. And what this means now is that I could actually take these files, set them all to time stretch. And then if I was to wipe out my whole entire tempo track and change it drastically, these are going to update. And like we have our new time base over here, I'm currently in beat linear or I could do time linear, but now I've just drastically changed the tempo. Let's go like this even. And now we're right on the click at a static 139 BPM. So just awesome, awesome workflow. Anyways, I hope you guys got something from this video. If you are finding this content useful, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll do my best to get back to you and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.